stem cell therapy. I mean, you can't turn on the TV, open up the paper, talk to a friend, and hear the word stem cell. So what are stem cells? Well, stem cells are, stem cells are a conception first happens. So sperm and an egg get together, and it starts out as one cell. That's the ultimate stem cell, because think about it. That thing has to divide, and divide, and divide, and not only that, as it's dividing, somewhere along the line, it has to become a cell that becomes your skin, or your eyes, or your heart, or your liver. Um, so a stem cell is a cell that has the ability to be, turn into anything. I can turn it into a heart cell, I can turn it into a brain cell, I can turn it into a meniscal cell from my knee. Um, it just needs the right messenger or the right stimulation. So it's been a hot topic in medicine and it's given for all types of orthopedic um, uh, issues. Um, it's, there's a lot of research giving it for cardiac issues as well. Um, there's some problems with stem cells because where do they come from? You know, they're not necessarily so easy to get uh, as stem cell producing cells is the bone marrow. But it's also found in fat tissue. It's found in umbilical cord blood, so on a pregnant adult we can get it there. And every organ in your body actually has some stem cells, even the heart. So an adult heart actually has some stem cells uh, that it keeps around for doing minor repairs. Uh, as things like fibroblasts and some of the myocytes uh, wear and tear, it's got the ability on a very limited basis. Um, so what if we could send the messages to these cells to do what it needs to do? So if a patient had a heart attack and now they've got an area of the heart that has a scar, so it's now fibrous tissue instead of muscle tissue, well how cool would it be if we can inject the messengers to send to those stem cells to say, hey, we need you to make more, more muscles. And that's basically what exosomes are. They're little transport vessels that come from the stem cells. Um, and just to show you, uh, the effect of stem cells on target tissues is, is due to these transport vesicles, these little tiny microscopic vesicles, which we call exosomes. Um, and they've been shown to inhibit the enlarging of a heart in patients with hypertrophy. They can be differentiated into cardiac cells for, for repair. Uh, they also have been shown to activate, activate cells to make new blood vessels. So um, they're involved in that process as well. So if we could control it, give it, um, we could have potentially a remarkable, remarkable therapy. What is, um, and, and stem cells have been looked at for everything, for ischemic heart disease, which is a coronary disease. It's been looked at heart failure. We know it affects, um, if, if you give even in, in animal models and, and some of the, the smaller clinical trials, patients who've been given these exosomes from, from the stem cells, they actually have um, a diminution of the area of scar in the heart um, and an improvement in what we call the ejection fraction, the pump, pumping action. It's been used to reverse the process of atherosclerosis because uh, it can get in and mop up some of these foam cells that uh, are caused by the deposition of cholesterol. and. Um, it could send signals to that lining of the blood vessels where this all begins. That little lining of the blood vessel, the endothelium, when that gets injured, that's what starts this whole process. So it can help in peripheral vascular disease. And what they really look like are, is you've got a donor cell and a recipient cell. And what the exosomes are, they're the way the cell can wall off all ty types of molecules, 
usually it's RNA or some type of protein and it spits itself out and it can be taken up by another cell so basically it's a way of moving RNA to from one cell to another and when they do uh, you know when you hear them talking about cloning sheep in the lab what they're doing is they're taking that RNA and DNA and from one animal and injecting it into another animal and, and causing those stem cells to differentiate into something new. So, I mean, you could get crazy thinking about it, but in any <laughs> case, um, exosomes, they've been shown clinically to decrease the infarct size during a heart attack. There's studies that show that they decrease brain damage during stroke, they improve heart muscle function during in heart failure, they improve exercise capacity in patients who have claudication from peripheral arterial disease, and they may even actually regenerate heart muscle function that's, that's being studied. The exosomes, so problems with giving stem cells, all right, they've got to be taken from your body, either your bone marrow, your fat, they've got to be spun down, the cells have to be taken out, washed, and I can't really give those to another patient, you know? Uh, but the exosomes in that are not the actual cells, they're the messengers. They can actually be produced in the lab in bulk, so ultimately they'll be cheaper. We don't have the immune problems we have with stem cells. Um, they're easy to administer, and they really do look promising. So the program we're setting up here uh, because we've had so much success with this in the orthopedic sector is we're going to start administering these exosomes to patients with certain cardiovascular conditions um, and, uh, and follow very closely uh, but we're very excited that we think patients are going to do remarkably well with really the goal uh, to take a patient with heart failure who's on six, seven, eight medicines, you know, if I can get them off half of them or get their doses down or get them off all of them or just make them feel better because despite all that medicine, they still feel like crap. And if I can improve LV function, uh, heart muscle function, uh, that's a real exciting thing. So, um, you know, I've been opening arteries for 30 years. I'm really getting tired of it. I would love a way to prevent the blockages from occurring. And that, that's, that DNA, RNA through exosomes is where the answer is going to be. So we're not there yet, but ultimately there won't be any more stents, there won't be any more open heart surgery. It will be an injection of exosomes that gets into the artery, mops up the cholesterol, repairs the endothelium, and restores the artery to new. And that's really ultimately, you know, where, where we're headed. Um, but this is real exciting stuff. So um, I'm going to leave it there. So we leave some time for questions. I think we ran a little late, but um, I thank you for, uh, for listening. I hope I've gotten you as excited as me. It's really exciting stuff. So, you know, and Look, I'm on staff at Memorial, I'm on staff at Doctors, I was in the cath lab this morning opening up an artery. I'm more excited about this stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm not, you know, there's room for all of it, but ultimately it really would be nice if we can intervene early enough that we didn't have to have these talks with patients who either have or know somebody that has had a severe heart attack or a stroke. Um, we're only a couple of months away from giving this to patients, you know, right after a stroke to limit brain damage, uh, right after a heart attack. Uh, so I'm, working, I'm actually going to work on a protocol to get this into the hospital, too, on a limited basis for patients who come in with an acute uh, myocardial infarction, acute heart attack, because uh, this will limit infarct size. So anyway, I thank you. For more information about these exciting regenerative therapies, you can find us at advancedrejuvenation.us. You can also contact us by phone at 941-330-8553 or email us at info at advancedrejuvenation.us.
If you found the information on this video helpful, please like us and share us on Facebook. You just never know whose life you might touch. Well, thanks for joining us. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now.